Feeling lost after Oshinoko's finale? Well, you're not alone. Fans are all over the place. Some are fuming about loose ends, others are loving the bold moves, and the rest of them, well, they're probably just a little bit confused. But don't sweat it because I've got your back. This video is going to break down every bit of that ending. We're talking about Aqua's exit, Ruby's big moment, and everything in between. By the time we're done, you'll have all the info you need to figure out if this ending was awesome or a total flop. So let's dive in and sort out this wild ride together. Oshinoko finally ended with its last chapter, 166, on November 2024. This manga began in April 2020 and told the tough journey of Aqua and Ruby Hoshino, who started as huge fans of their idol, Ai. They were later reincarnated as her children, only to witness her tragic murder. Throughout the series, Oshinoko has explored the entertainment world and the challenges faced by its stars. Ai Hoshino was one such star. She struggled with the intense pressure of fame and dreamed of performing at the Tokyo Dome, but was killed, cutting that dream short. Though the story shows how the remaining characters refuse to let tragedy rule their lives, they break the cycle and bring light to the world by sharing hope and inspiration with others. And although some fans may not love the ending, the final chapter entitled Star shows how hope can still shine through even the darkest times. In chapter 166, Oshinoko ends with the world grieving the loss of Aqua. After Aqua's death, Ruby felt heartbroken tearing down posters in her room and crying often, struggling to accept that he was really gone. Even with her sadness, Ruby did find the strength to keep going, carrying her pain with her as she moved forward. Kana did the same, encouraging others to keep living. Akane explained how they searched for meaning in their lives, always remembering those who had left them. Kana brought Memcho to comfort Ruby, offering support during this difficult time. Aqua and Ruby's friends in the entertainment world, like Minami, Frill, Melt, and Taiki, were also shown dealing with Aqua's loss. Akane inspired Miyako and Ichigo to keep running Strawberry Productions, while Kana and Akane continued with their acting careers. Taishi Gotanda, the director, stayed focused on making meaningful stories. Akane describes Ruby's journey in the idol world, hiding her sorrow behind lies and forcing herself to smile. She put all her pain into her performances, trying to keep Aqua's dreams alive and honor his memory. To fans, Ruby's life seemed like a powerful story, with her true story becoming something people couldn't look away from. We also saw that Ruby finally fulfilled her mother's dream by performing at the Tokyo Dome, joined by Memcho and a new artist replacing Kana. We saw Kana and Akane watching from the audience, feeling proud of Ruby's strength. Akane noted that Ruby's struggles touched everyone who felt lost, making her shine even brighter, like a star in the night sky. Oshinoko finally ended with Ruby leaving her apartment for rehearsals, ready to keep telling her story. No matter how hard things got, she was determined to keep smiling on stage, knowing that I and Aqua were always watching over her. It's a very bittersweet ending, but Oshinoko's ending is all about one necessary lie. After all, isn't this series based on the power of lies? After the tragic end of Aqua's journey for revenge on Hikaru, which led to both of their deaths, those who loved him, especially his twin sister Ruby, decided to keep going rather than to fall into despair. Even though Ruby lost her brother, Kana never got to tell Aqua how she fell, and Akane never saw him again, the chapter shows all the friends and colleagues Aqua made carrying on with their lives. And Ruby manages to do this by telling herself a little lie lie that she's not sad. This lie becomes a source of strength, helping her friends and fans keep going even through tough times. Everyone knows how much Ruby misses Aqua, and her sadness is well known, but she keeps performing, forcing herself to smile and lie about not being sad. For people watching, this is inspiring. It gives them hope in a world full of sadness. And this is another key theme of Oshinoko's ending. 
Of course, it's impossible to live your life without ever encountering sadness and pain, but this ending shows us that no matter how hard it gets, you can't let yourself fall to despair. In this final chapter, readers are reminded that it's easy to see the darkness in the world, but some people feel like it's their job to make others happy or to keep fighting for hope. We see this in moments like Akane and Aqua's last scene on the bridge, Kana and Memcho hugging a crying Ruby, Minami, Frill, Melt and Ichigo Productions pushing forward despite the sadness and you know we've got Taiki as well, he's quietly visiting his mother's grave. Even Gatanda is shown working with his Japan Academy Award next to a photo of Aqua. This all symbolizes that hope can win over sadness. As Ruby performs at the dome, she smiles much like her mother did, showing love for her family and fans who need some light in their lives. In one scene, we see a young fan look up at her, seeing Ruby shine brightly even against the world's darkness. In the end of Oshinoko, Ruby, well, she makes a choice. Despite her own hard past, losing her brother and never getting a chance with her first crush, she decides to shine so others won't feel the despair that she once felt. In the final chapter, we also see how Ruby and I had similar journeys in show business. Back when I was an idol, she was one of Japan's brightest stars. She gave people hope, especially Serena, which was Ruby's previous life, the girl facing the very serious illness. I's music and her warmth made Serena feel stronger and gave her something to believe in, even during her hardest days. Serena looked up to Ai, not just for her talent, but for how she seemed to glow with kindness and courage. Ai was like a shining light that helped Serena keep going, even with all the pain that she was facing. Sadly, Ai's life was cut short because of Hikaru Kamaki, the father of her children, who became, well, obsessed with her and her perfection. However, even with all the trouble she had as a performer, I never stopped being a beacon of hope for people like Serena. Now, after Aqua's death, Ruby found herself in a very similar spot. Even though she was heartbroken, she chose to keep her career going. Because just like her mother, Ruby became a light for people struggling with hard times, showing them that they weren't alone. Through her work, Ruby carried on Ai's legacy, helping others find hope in the darkness. And for me personally, I think this was such a powerful theme to put into Oshinoko's final chapter. However, not all of this chapter and Oshinoko's ending as a whole was good and there was a lot that was missed out or could have been done better. And that's like all series endings to be honest. Just look at both MHA and JJK who also ended this year. And it's not just them, you can look at so many manga endings, it's rare to honestly find a perfect ending, it's all how you perceive it yourself. However, However, Oshinoko's ending is no different from those series. Why? Well, because it has its fans divided. A small portion, well, they're actually loving it. Others, well, they're ready to burn their copies of the manga, which is a true story, by the way. Many have done that. <laughs> a large part of the fandom hated the way it ended. They're saying Aqua's double suicide with Hikaru makes no sense for Aqua's character. All that growth we saw, poof gone. Some fans are actually really upset thinking it's just glorifying suicide and then there's Ruby's story as well. They feel like it got totally pushed aside for Aqua's dramatic exit. However, there are plenty of fans defending this ending as well. They're all about the deeper meaning, especially when it comes to Ruby. Those two white star eyes? Yes, please. For these fans, it's like watching Ai's dream come alive through her daughter. They just love how Ruby uses her grief to fuel her performances. But at the same time, this again is one of its biggest issues. Sure, we got some sort of closure for Ruby's character in the final chapter, but we only got glimpses of other characters, including Kana and Akane. We saw panels, sure, but I think the lack of dialogue from them or more depth into what happens next for them is a big loss to the series. Personally, I'd love to have seen more of the other characters, especially those two. But the biggest upset was obviously what happened a few chapters back back, which was, of course, Aqua's death. That got a lot of people worked up, that's for sure. Aqua deciding to off himself with Akaru was, of course, a big shock. 
You know, some fans are calling it a very brave move. Others think it's just a bit too much, you know, too dark, and they wonder if it was really necessary at all. This debate is actually making people look at the whole series differently. You've got fans going back and rereading everything, trying to figure out if this ending actually fits. Others are just done saying that it doesn't make any sense and they're never going to read any of Akka's work again. It's getting really heated out there, to be fair. Reddit threads are going on forever and Twitter has been equally as heated on the matter. But here's the thing. Maybe both sides have a point. Sure, the ending's super controversial, but it's also got people talking, thinking, and feeling. It's super messy and complicated, just like the idol industry Oshinoko is all about. Perhaps our reactions were all part of the plan of this ending. So what do you think? Did Oshinoko stick the landing or totally blow it at the end? Because that's the beauty of it. There's no right answer. It's all about what you take away from it. One thing's for sure though, Oshinoko's left its mark. It's got people talking, arguing, thinking about stuff they'd never would have done before. And that's what great stories do, right? They stick with you and make you see things differently. And this manga, well, it's done just that. Pretty damn cool if you ask me. Now, while you wait for the next video to drop, why not check out this video where I talk about how true the industry is depicted in Oshinoko through the eyes of a full-time YouTuber. I'll see you over there. Take care. Peace, peace.